In times of recession, many organizations realize they must change the way they do business in order to grow. Brown McFarlane is a specialist supplier of steel plate products to the engineering industry. In 2002, having traded exclusively in the UK, it expanded internationally, setting up an export business that at once began to thrive. We'd convinced ourselves at that point that the UK, like much of Northern Europe, was engineering-wise in a not terminal but gentle decline. So in 2008 we were happy to expand uh, internationally as fast as we could and to let our UK business effectively look after itself. But when the markets began to contract in 2008-9, Brown McFarlane refocused its attentions on the UK and came to the conclusion that engineering in the country was not in the parlour state they'd been led to believe. I just felt that we had a lot of really good customers and a good reputation in the market where we could do so much more, not by trying to reinvent the wheel, but focusing on areas which we excelled at and doing them better. We looked much more carefully at what those customers actually required from us or from the industry, looked at those areas where we were already supplying that in one form or another and looked to improve on that but then more importantly looked in the, the things which our customers felt we could do that we weren't doing. Improving customer service is often a business differentiator in a struggling economy. Brown McFarlane's determination to add value to its customers' production slowly saw its UK client base begin to grow again, from 400 live accounts in 2009 to over 1,000 in 2012. To support this new customer service ethos, it also made a significant financial investment in product range, in machinery and in the appearance of its headquarters in Stoke-on-Trent. It was important for us that we started our customers' experience from the gate on in, so that they understood the philosophy we were putting forward, which is one of total quality from the start to the finish. Investment was also made in upgrading machinery cut steel with tighter tolerances so less machining needs to be done at a customer's premises. The closer we can get to his finished tolerance, the less work and machining he has to do, therefore the less time he takes which saves him money and the less uh, physical work he has to do which saves him money. The only way we can get those kind of very tight tolerances from cutting machinery is to invest in increasingly more sophisticated kit. Um, and that's what we've done. It takes us a bit further into our customers' own production program. Brown McFarlane is not only a processor of steel products, it's also a stockholder and trader, and as a result buys raw product from steel mills around Europe. The new machinery has impacted positively on its relationships with suppliers. If the supplier can themselves see value in supplying to us, not simply by making money on the product, but by us enhancing their reputation, giving them the opportunity to, to sell more into a marketplace, then they begin to work so closely with us that it becomes a genuine partnership. But perhaps the most significant investment has been made in stock. For over a century, Brown McFarlane has worked with carbon steel. It first considered moving into stainless steel over 10 years ago. Finally, in 2009, it took a plunge, spending almost £2 million on new stainless steel stock and process equipment. A lot of it was in response to the fact that our customers were saying, if you could do in stainless steel what you're doing in carbon steel, offer the same level of service and the same level of professionalism, then you would have us as a customer. Now, it's a big step to go from a, a glib statement like that to start investing millions of pounds. But if enough people say it um, and you want to expand into those specialist energy markets, then it's a logical step to take. Despite the inauspicious timing in just under four years, stainless steel sales have gone from zero to over seven million pounds a year. And it's had a rejuvenating effect on exports, with more than 50% of turnover generated overseas. Brown McFarlane's faith in British engineering has been repaid. With total turnover now in excess of £60 million, it can look forward to a prosperous future.